relationship in math called exponential growth. And to do that, we're going to look at an example. A type of bacteria grows so that it triples in number every day. On the day that our friend Roger begins observing the bacteria, a sample has a population of 100. So here's what we want to find. We want to figure out what is the population after each of the first four days. Then from that information, try to come up with an equation that can model this growth. We'll then try to graph it and discover whether or not this relationship is a function or not. And then assuming that this trend continues, can we use our model to predict what the population will be after one full week of watching the bacteria grow? Let's start by recording what Roger has seen over the first four days. We're going to call the initial day, day zero. It's because no days have yet happened, or no full days have happened. And Roger has noticed that his sample population started with a population of 100. So we're going to say that that number, 100, is occurring on day zero, or after zero days have elapsed. So after one day, the number of bacteria have tripled. This is some easy mental math we can do here. Tripling 100 is equal to 300. So after one full day, he should have 300 bacteria. If he waits another day, it should triple again. 300 tripled again is 900. And we'll do this for the remaining two days here. So after the third day, we'll triple 900 again. That's 2,700. And then after the fourth day, 2,700 times 3 is 8,100. Those bacteria grew really fast. And you can sort of already see what this relationship of exponential growth is like. Starts off relatively small, grows a little, grows a little, and then it sort of explodes into a big number. So let's try to figure out what an equation is that we could use to model this growth so that if we wanted to figure out how many would be in the population in 7 days or 21 days or 100 days, we could use this formula rather than needing to continue the chart all the way down. Well, our initial day started with 100 bacteria. Mathematically, how did we get to this 300 after one day? Well, we took this 100 bacteria and we multiplied it by 3. 3 times 100 is 300. Well, how did we get to this 900? Well, I guess if we start all the way from the beginning, we took our initial 100, multiplied it by 3, and then took that number and multiplied it by 3. So this is the same thing as saying 100 times 3, and then times 3 again. And then each day after, we just multiply this result by another 3. Multiply by 3 again, and of course on our last day we start with our initial amount of 100. We multiply by 3, we multiply by 3, we multiply by 3, and then we multiply by 3 one last time. The shorthand way of writing each of these is easy to do because we understand exponents. Exponents are just a quicker way to write us multiplying something over and over and over again. So on the first day we just have our 100. On the next day, we had 100 multiplied by 3. And here we have 100 multiplied by 3 times 3, so that's just 3 squared. Here we have 100 multiplied by 3 cubed, and then finally 100 multiplied by 3 to the exponent 4. We can kind of see a pattern here. All of these are the same except for this first one here, and we'll get to that in a second. We could write a general formula for this, and we can say that the population after x number of days is going to equal 100 times 3 to some exponent. So what's the relationship between the exponent that's on the 3 and what day it is? Well, you can sort of see here that if it was day 4, the exponent was 4. If it was day 2, the exponent was 2. So 
it's going to be 100 times 3 to the exponent of whatever day it is, and in this case we've said the day is x. Well, how does this work for the first day? Because the first day, before we've even had any growth, we had an initial population of 100. But there's no exponent on there, or there's no times 3. In fact, there is. We've already discovered that you can, in fact, put an exponent onto this, and if we follow our rule here, I'm going to put a 1 here because that's day 1. If we put day 0 here, because all these match up, 3 to the exponent 0, we've already discovered that that just equals 1. So 3 to the exponent 0 is 1, 1 times 100 is 100. And then this whole pattern makes sense. So here's our formula or our model that we can use for this exponential growth, where x is the variable. It's, it's interesting in this case because x happens to be in an exponent. We haven't really seen our variable in the exponent before. Uh, but it's a pretty simple formula. We have a starting amount. We have some rate of growth. In this case, it's tripling, so our rate is 3, and our variable is the exponent x. OK, so we've set up a graph here on Desmos to see what on earth this relationship looks like. And we're going to try to figure out whether or not this is a function or not by looking at the graph. The table that we had from the previous slide is set up right here. And I'm going to turn on these points, and we can see these points graphed out right here. Our initial amount down here, way down here, this is the point 0, 100. And then we can see every day we add these other numbers here. So 100 to 300, 300 to 900, 900 to 2,700, and so on and so forth. And I'll take them off here, just so we can see the graph a bit easier. Now I've also included our formula that we said could represent this model. P x equals 100 times 3 to the x. If I turn this on, this is what this curve looks like. See, it looks really uh, unique in the fact that it starts off growing really slowly and then it sort of explodes up. This is, this is the exponential growth we were talking about, something that starts growing really slowly and then it sort of just booms. The other interesting thing is what happens prior to our initial amount here. Our initial amount here of 100, if you remember, is right here. But our curve does continue on to the left. But if you notice, it never crosses this boundary of the uh, x-axis. There is an asymptote there. And that kind of makes sense, because if we are continually growing, we should never really have any negative population of anything. But let's think for a minute what on earth we mean when our x value goes into the negatives. So although our y value, our y value representing population, never goes below 0, what happens when our x value goes below 0? Well, when the x value goes below 0, all that means is remembering our x represented days. So that means we're going into negative days. To interpret that, negative days just means days prior to us starting our investigation. Uh, our friend Roger, who was doing this investigation, he noticed that on the start of his investigation there were a hundred bacteria. But prior to him looking at this, there must have been some sort of bacteria before that, like a day before, two days before, and so on. Those amounts of growth appear prior to zero on the x-axis. And But you'll notice they'll never dip below zero. In fact, if we zoom in closer and closer, this curve uh, let's do that quickly here. This curve never, in fact, touches the x-axis. You can see that it asymptotes right there. OK, let's zoom back out. Here is our curve, and we can see all our points that are there. So is this a function or not? Well, judging by our rules for what a function is, a function is something that passes the vertical line test. We can see there's no vertical line, if we drew it on here, that would um, cross this relationship twice. So this does in fact pass the vertical line test. And this does continue on upwards forever. It will not asymptote on, uh, on the right side here. That just keeps on going forever, just sort of like a parabola would. So this is in fact a function. If we wanted to use this function or this model now to estimate or guess or to figure out how many bacteria would there would be after seven days, 
Well, we can just use our equation. Our equation here is the population after X number of days. Well, let's see what is the population after seven days. 218,700. So how did it get that 218,700? Well, let's rework this equation here. So instead, we're just going to have P equal, and now we're going to write the equation itself, 100 times 3, and now we're going to put it to the exponent 7, because it's going to be day 7. So right there you can see that also equals 218,700. So our amount of growth here started at 100 every day, three, it grew, so 300 to 900 to 2700 to 8100, and then at the end of the week, 218,700. That is huge growth compared to the 100 that it started at. And that is the essence of exponential growth. So to summarize here, what we just saw was exponential growth. Exponential growth exists in a lot of things that we see in real life, especially in the areas of science and finance. Uh, you would see exponential growth with things like bacteria. Uh, we're going to see it a lot with, uh, in science with different elements and how they grow and how they decay. You'll also see a lot of exponential growth in the world of finance with things like interest. And if you put money into an account, it will eventually grow if it, ha if it builds interest over time or if you put it into mutual funds. The world population is growing exponentially. It started off very small and then we are booming in growth. Every single day more and more people are born and uh, that growth rate increases as we go through time. So that is growing exponentially as well. Not all things grow exponentially at the same rate, however. Some things triple, like that example we saw. Maybe it only doubles. Maybe it only grows, you know, 5%. Um, all of these different things will factor into the exponential growth, but they all are exponential growth. The basic formula for exponential growth is right here. Y equals A times B to the exponent X. A just represents our initial or our starting amount, and that B value just represents what is the rate of growth that we're using. Are we doubling? Are we tripling? What is it? Throughout the rest of this unit, we're going to look at different types of exponential growth and decay and look at other models that we can use to express our exponential growth or decay patterns.